If you're looking to improve your Madden 16 game, be sure to stop by MaddenXO.com. There you're going to find the best ebooks on the market, both offensive and defensive. $10 a month gets you access to every single one of their ebooks now through the remainder of this season and on into Madden 17 as well. Again, guys, MaddenXO.com. The link will be in the description. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys another Madden 16 Ultimate Team video. And guys, the budget squad, the budget team builder is back. Guys, what we're going to be doing here on the new series is putting together a budget team, uh, basically going to find the best players at each position based on, you know, we're going to kind of switch it around a little bit on the actual budget that we have. Uh, what I had been doing before in previous years and, and earlier this year is kind of putting it on like a 5,000 coin budget. But at this point in Madden, I think pretty much everybody can probably afford to do like at least 20,000 coins per item. Uh, so what we're doing is at least to start things off here, we're going to stick with a 20,000 coin budget. We're starting off at defensive end. Guys, if you're new to the series, this is something where I've, it's like I said, it's something I've been doing for a little while here. Um, we go over the best cards that are cheap in price and we basically compare them to more expensive items. Not necessarily saying that the budget item is better, but it gives us kind of a, an idea of roughly what you're paying for when you start to pay for some of these more expensive items and what you can do by saving some coins, especially if you're running a budget squad. So with that being said, guys, let's hop right into it. Very first comparison that we have here, guys, is the positional hero Michael Bennett on the left, and we're comparing him to Cameron Jordan on the right. Now, Cameron Jordan is a solid defensive end. He is a football outsiders, uh, so it, you know it's something where you're getting a little bit more value, I think, for less coins. I, I like the football outsiders a lot for these budget cards because you tend to get a quality card without having to spend a ton of coins. So uh, again, guys, 250,000 coins on the left there for Michael Bennett. Cameron Jordan is only 10,000 coins. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice here is that uh, obviously there's a lot of green on the left. And if you're new to the series, guys, the green attributes mean that they're better than the other card. The red attribute means that it's worse than the other card. So, uh, you know, obviously, first thing, guys, that you're going to notice is that obviously the, um, the one on the left there, Michael Bennett, Definitely a better card overall. I can't even say that it's not. But I think what we want to point out here is that it's not substantially better in most of these attributes. Now, the first set of defensive ends that we're looking at are balanced defensive ends. So these are guys that can both play against the run as well as play the pass pretty effectively. Uh, they're not particularly amazing at one or the other. Although, obviously, you see Michael Bennett does have 97 power move. That is really good. But he's also a really good run defender as well with good block shedding and good strength. Strength. Now, where Cameron Jordan, is, I think, is really good, again, guys, is that he does have good speed. He also has good block shedding, good strength, good tackling, good hit power. He's really quite good overall. Like, he's he's just a really well-balanced defensive end. His finesse move is really poor, but most of the time, these guys, the intelligence is there in them, built into the game, that they're going to do the move that they're better at more often. So we're going to see him utilize his power move, which is a 92, a lot more often than he'll utilize his finesse move. And when he gets off of the edge, when he's coming after the quarterback, he has great speed, like I said, and in 86, and with 92 acceleration as well. So he really can go after the quarterback, as well as play the run. And that's something that I really like about this card. Um, there are things, like I said, that are not as good about this card. It doesn't have as great of awareness, hit power, things like that. And obviously, uh, the power move isn't as high as Michael Bennett's, but it's still pretty good. So uh, that's the first budget card that I want to show you guys. And now we're going to move on to the second set, which is a little bit less expensive. So if you don't want to spend quite as many coins... You might want to consider taking a look at this Jay Howard. It's only an 89 overall, but he is 6,000 coins. Super, super cheap, and I think he does a pretty good job. We're going we're gonna to compare him to Sean Phillips here on the left, who, yes, I understand, has a substantially better power move. He does have a 95 power move, but that's actually not a super high attribute at this point in the game. 95 for a power move, I mean, it's good, but it's not like as good as what your pass rushing specialists will have. So I think um, both these guys are really, really good in a lot of these attributes here, you're going to see that Jay Howard is actually better in quite a few things here. Acceleration, for example, he's got a 90 attribute with 85 speed as well. So as far as pure speed goes, he is going to be faster. He is also going to be better in a couple of other attributes like block shedding, strength, tackling, 
uh, all those types of things, he is definitely higher than your Sean Phillips. So um, a, a really good overall card here. Once again, his hit power is low. His awareness is low. His play recognition is low. But for a defensive lineman, I don't really worry about those things quite as much. I need somebody that can block shed, who has good strength, and who can get to the quarterback if he needs to. So speed, acceleration, strength, and block shedding, I think, are the most important things. Obviously, along with either a power move or a finesse move. 91 for a power move is a little bit low, so he's not going to be the best at pass rushing. But I still think he can get the job done from time to time as well. And for 6,000 coins, you could try him out. If you don't like him, you can always move up and go to something a little more expensive. Next on the list, guys, we're going to move on to guys that are kind of what I call pass rushing specialists. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're horrible against the run, but in some cases, they are horrible against the run. Dwight Freeney is one of those cases. He is a flashback card, 98 overall, definitely one of the best pass rushers in this game, no question about it, but we're going to be comparing him to Vic Beasley Jr. Um, this is a 95 overall card, another really, really good card, 15,000 coins though. Super, super cheap. It's hard to find a defensive end that's going to be anywhere near this price that's going to give you this type of attributes. I mean, you're talking about 91 speed with 96 acceleration. If you weren't comparing him to Dwight Freeney, who is arguably one, of, well, he's definitely one of the fastest defensive ends that they're going to make in the game this year at 91 speed with 91 or 99 acceleration, um, you wouldn't be talking about Vic Beasley being slower than hardly anybody. So, I mean, definitely a very, very fast card. Excellent block shedding as well at an 86 for a guy who's a, a kind of, like I said, a pass rushing specialist. 93 strength is also really good. His tackling is a little bit low. It's not something that I'm super excited about at an 84, but interestingly enough, it's actually higher than Dwight Freeney's. The big thing here, guys, is that I like the fact that Vic Beasley has both a solid power move at an 85 as well as a 94 finesse move. So he can do either of those two moves, and you know, regardless of what animation gets triggered, he's still going to be able to do a good job. So that's something that I definitely like. Awareness is certainly low on these on this card at an 82 along with an 81 play recognition, but I kind of think that that's something that helps bring down his overall. Because if you were talking about him being 90 in both of those attributes, for example, which is like a solid attribute but it's not anything amazing he would boost his aware his overall up quite a bit so definitely think about this Vic Beasley card if you're looking for somebody that's a pass rusher he can definitely go out there and do that for you the next one guys something again that's a little bit cheaper here uh, we're taking a look at Jerry Hughes there on the left this is a team captain Jerry Hughes another really good card uh, as far as a pure pass rusher goes and we're going to compare him to Calais Campbell who again I, I, it's hard for me to find guys with that are more expensive like this that aren't good at pretty much everything. So, you know, you're going to see, obviously, that Calais Campbell is definitely better than Jerry Hughes in most of these attributes. But a couple of things here. Speed, acceleration, and finesse move, which are the three most important things when it comes to just pure pass rushing. You're talking about Jerry Hughes being better in all three of those attributes. Five faster in speed and three faster in acceleration along with one higher in finesse move. And he's not substantially lower in other things either. I mean, you look at like his, um, for like his example, his pursuit is also really good. His play recognition is also really good. Awareness is only two lower. So you're definitely talking about a card that can get after the quarterback. Now, the problem with Jerry Hughes is that he is not very good against the run. 76 for strength. This is a pure pass rusher. I'm telling you guys, if you're talking about being in like a third and one situation, you don't want to have Jerry Hughes on the field. But if you're talking about a situation where it's third and 15, for example, and you need somebody that can get out, get to the quarterback from the defensive end position, he can certainly go out there and do that for you. Definitely recommend this card in those pass situations where you know the opponent's going to pass. He can go out there and get to the quarterback for sure. Next one, guys, and this is moving on to the run-stopping defensive ends. These guys are guys who are, you know, like I said, kind of the opposite of Jerry Hughes. So if you're in a situation where it's third and one, third and two, fourth and one, those types of things, you want these guys on the field because they can definitely go out there and make plays against the running backs. So here you go, guys. Uh, left side of your screen, we've got Chris Long, 165,000 coins. This is a Campus Hero card. Uh, there is also another 93 overall Chris Young. 
uh, or uh, Chris Long, excuse me, that is uh, another one that you could say is kind of, in my opinion, a little bit overpriced. And it actually, the the one on the right here, Derek Wolf, actually f- compares more favorably to that one, as you might imagine. Uh, it's actually faster. I think it might have, uh, I think it actually has better acceleration, too. I think the Chris Long, the 93, has like 88 acceleration, and this one has 98 acceleration. So they definitely bumped that up a little bit. But, uh, you know, for the most part here, what I think is most important here for defensive ends when you're looking at run stuffing you want block shedding you want strength you want tackling and I suppose you could say you want hit power as well um hit power you know of course can st- you know force fumbles and things like that and I have heard that they're uh that the new updates did maybe make it so that fumbles happen a little bit more often especially against quarterbacks but um Either way, I think the like I said, those are the most important things. Speed and acceleration are important as well. Derek Wolf isn't spectacular in those things at an only an 82 speed and a 92 for acceleration. Chris Long is really, really good with the 98 acceleration. His high end speed being an 85 isn't the best, but it's definitely still good. So, uh, you know, something to think about there. Now, Derek Wolf is not a very good pass rusher. I think that's one thing that we have to keep in mind here. He does only have an 84 for a power move and a 63 for a finesse move. Those are not good attributes. Now, I won't say that he's just going to get completely abused every play or anything like that. He's still going to get pressure because that's just the way that this game works. But you know what? At the end of the day, he's not as good as the guys that are the top end guys, uh, the pass rushing guys. You really want Derek Wolf on the field when you know it's a running situation. So uh, that's the reason why I like this card. I think he's pretty solid in most of the attributes that you would look for for run stuffing. So uh, yeah, he's definitely somebody that I would consider if I'm looking for a pure run stuffer in those fourth and short, third and short situations. Moving on from there, guys, we've got uh, another defensive end for run stuffing here. Now, Jason Pierre-Paul, I'm going to go ahead and admit this. He's not traditionally considered a run stuffing defensive end, whether it be in Madden or in real life. But to be completely honest with you, his pass rushing moves, yeah, he does have a 95 for a finesse move, and that sounds great. But again, it's not up there with the high-end guys. So, to be honest with you, he's kind of almost a balanced defensive end, I guess you could say, because he's good at both. But I wanted to just compare this because I wanted to give you guys kind of a, an estimate or to show you kind of what Muhammad Wilkerson can do, because this is an 85 or an 86 overall card, excuse me. Base Elite came out at the very beginning of the game. It's only 2,500 coins now. Uh, but again, if you're looking for a run stuffer, this is your man. Because he's got some monstrous attributes here. 95 for a block shed, 91 for strength, 94 for tackling. Solid in just about all of those attributes. Now, where he does lag behind is that he does only have a 71 for speed and an 80 for acceleration. So he's not going to be able to get out there and make plays quite as well on the edge. But at the same time, he does contain well enough that he is going to be able to stop most of the outside runs before they get to the outside. So that's one thing that I definitely like about Muhammad Wilkerson. This is another card that you could even consider putting at defensive tackle based on his attributes. I mean, obviously, in a 3-4 set, you're looking for your run support defensive ends on the field. So he's somebody that you would want to consider having out there, especially on your budget squads. Now, what's kind of interesting about this card is that it actually also has a 93 power move, which isn't amazing, but for a card that's 2,500 coins, that's pretty damn good. Again, he's not going to get after the quarterback too quickly because he only has 71 speed and 80 acceleration. That might give the other quarterback or the opposing quarterbacks, excuse me, like an extra second or something to throw the ball. And that could be enough to where he's going to get the pass off most of the time. But Wilkerson does have that power move. And there are times where he's just going to straight up abuse the guy in front of him and get to the quarterback. So definitely consider this card for run support. I really do like all of these cards that I put on here. And uh, at some point, I might actually considering consider actually doing a series where I just go ahead and utilize all of these cards for, you know, a season or two or something like that. Show you guys what we can do with, uh, you know, me being a slightly above average Madden player, I'd say. And, uh, you know, just showing you what you can do with just a pure budget squad. So with that being said, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, Again, guys, I'll be bringing you guys more of these over the next few days and weeks here because um, I kind of put together a full list of them. It's just a matter of making the video and uh, it's actually, it actually does take me quite a bit longer to make these because I have to make custom graphics for everything. But it's worth it. I think you guys like the series, and I like Mike making the series as well. I'm definitely an analytical person, so uh, this is right up my alley. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.
Hey guys, if you're enjoying my videos, do me a favor, click that subscribe button on the right side of your screen right now. Otherwise, you can always check out my previous video by clicking on the left side of the screen. Thank you guys again.